In this video, we're going to be talking about germination. So we start off in a desert with this rose. Yes, like that can happen. But this rose, um, we know it creates a seed, right? Just like any other uh, other flower. Now let's pretend that this rose can, can this rose can create its seed in a nut. Okay. I know this is not true, but we know the seeds are created here. Um, and that's it. But let's pretend it can put it into a nut for the case, for the sake of this uh, video's explanation. Now it puts its seed into a nut, right, and releases it. Now it's important that the seed does not stay here and that it gets moved somewhere else. Why? Because otherwise, um, when the seed germinates, and germinate, by the way, means to turn into a flower or turn the seed into life. Now, when that needs to happen, if it's right next to its parent then what happens is they both will have the same environment to get nutrients from. And if the kid or the parent is better at um, better at getting nutrients, then it may cause the other one to die. So it's important that this one gets distributed to some other place where there's fresh nutrients and an area of its own to survive. Okay, so how does this happen? Um, how does this happen? How does this uh, distribution happen? Now, let's. that's why we have Scrat here. So Scrat is going to notice, oh, nice my um, nut so it's gonna go get it and it's gonna grab it okay um, and it's gonna move it somewhere completely else now remember when I'm talking about this nut or the seed I refer to any seed okay I'm just using this nut as an example it this happens to every kind of seed um, through its own through its own way now now that it moved this nut somewhere else um, it moves it there because we know he wants to put it under the ground to store it for winter, right? So that's exactly what he does. He buries this under the ground. Now, when winter comes, he forgot where he put it, so he cannot find it. Now, if he cannot find it in time to eat it, then this nut, the seed inside this nut will germinate to become a full-fledged flower, okay? So for this, so here for the sake, so inside, right, we have a seed. So this represents just any seed. If this seed doesn't get eaten by this um, scrat, then it's going to germinate over time. Now, what three things does it need? Does any seed need to be able to germinate or become a flower? There's three things. We're going to take it one by one. First of all, oxygen. Okay, oxygen, just like humans, this seed will need oxygen. The reason being the same for humans. Humans need oxygen to be able to make energy through aerobic respiration. If you have not learned about that yet, then I recommend you to watch a video on what aerobic respiration is. Um, but it's basically the process of making energy um, using oxygen. Okay, so it needs energy, and it's gonna and it's to make energy, it's gonna need oxygen. Secondly, it's gonna need the appropriate temperature. Why? Okay, so temperature is important for enzymes. Enzymes are little molecules that break down and make reactions happen. So without enzymes, you cannot make new new proteins, you cannot make um, uh, things in your body that allows you to function the way it does, okay? So you need temperature for these enzymes to be able to work. If it's too hot or too cold, these enzymes will struggle to function. They will just shut down and can't work. And I'll show you an example when we talk about the process of germination. Um, how specifically temperature is needed and then it will make more more sense and then lastly we need water we need water for um, two reasons one because water is gonna help crack open the seed okay water is gonna help move into a little hole called the micropile okay the micropile which we learned about in another video about structure of the seed so it's gonna move through the micropile and cause the seed to crack open because now that the seed is crack, cracked open, the flower can grow from inside out, okay? The plant can actually exit the seed. Secondly, water is needed to be able to hydrate the seed, and it's gonna have a very important function in this hydration process, which I'll mention just now. So let's get into making this actually make sense. So here we have the seed under the ground, okay? It's under the ground, and this is its structure, right? Internal structure. Now, this is the embryo. So this is the thing that's going to become the flower, okay? These other things are essentially just nutrient areas, okay? It's going to get its nutrients from these other areas. Now, in this chest, we're going to have all the answers to be able to, to describe this process. 
By the way, um, when I use definitions at the end of the videos, I have them here in word form if you forget something, okay? Because I don't want to write too much. It makes it look boring, okay? So just so you know. So let's break open this chest and see what's going on. Okay, so it all starts off with water, right? I said we need water. Now why? So here is a little area called a micropile, and water is going to enter through this area, okay? Okay, it's going to enter through this area here called the micropile. This is going to do two things. Crack open the seed, right? So that now this, this embryo, this is the embryo, this is the thing that's going to become the plant. The embryo can then grow out. If there's a crack and, it, and the seed is now open, this can, be grow, can grow out. Secondly, it's going to activate something called gibberellin. Gibberellin is inside the embryo. So water is going to cause the release of gibberellin. Okay, gibberellin is going to be this little soldier. Okay, his name is gibberellin. And gibberellin is a molecule that, um, that's job is to activate. So we're going to pretend this, this soldier is going to wake up some somebody. Okay, and by the way, this water, if you get poured water on your face, you're going to wake up, right? So that's the same way that this gibberellin gets woken up. When water comes in, when the water comes into contact with it, it's woken up now. Okay, now when it's woken up, it can wake something else up. So it's going to go wake up this little guy here. Wait, wait a second. First of all, I'm going to label. We got water. We got gibberellin. Okay. And then lastly, we got this guy here called amylase. Amylase. And I put it as a little chef because amylase, amylase's job is to chop up starch. Okay. Starch is in this little area here. Okay. Called the endo, endosperm. Okay. The endosperm is a little area, this yellow area-ish, that has a lot of nutrients in it, including starch. And it's going to help turn starch, because starch is, is too big. Starch is a bunch of little glucoses and maltoses put together. So it's a big, big blob. And it's too big for this embryo to use, okay? Because this embryo needs food, right? But starch is, starch is too big. It's like trying to eat a whole tree. You can't, right? So this little chef is going to break that down, this starch, into something eatable, okay? And this something eatable, or the smaller form, it's gonna break the starch apart into something smaller called maltose, okay? Maltose will then later on be broken down into something even smaller called glucose, okay? Glucose, we know, just like humans, uh, we need glucose to make energy. If we break down glucose, then we can have energy, okay? In the form of ATP, that's the same thing here. So, First of all, remember going back to temperature. We know why we need water. Temperature is needed because this enzyme, amylase, can only function at the right temperature. So if it's too hot or too cold, it will not be able to, to do its job. And so this embryo will not be able to get its glucose or maltose to be able to grow. Okay? And then lastly, we need oxygen. Why do we need oxygen? Because when glucose or maltose is formed, this embryo is going to use this glucose to be able to break it down and make energy. But to be able to do that, it, it needs um, to do aerobic respiration. And aerobic respiration requires oxygen, okay? So now you can see how all of these three things are super important to make this embryo grow. Okay, so when it grows, it gets bigger and bigger. So first it will have a stage like this, where it's a bit bigger, so like this. So you can see this part is going to become the root and this part will become the stem, okay, or the shoot. And then lastly, it's going to be even bigger after this process continues and it keeps having glucose and energy uh, until it's so big that it's actually sticking out of the ground, right? And now give it some time and it will also become a rose. So that's the process of germination and the things that you need to know.